How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine, part one, the engine components. I go up to Blackgate's engineering very frequently because I buy my materials and parts from there. And as you walk into the sales area, on the right hand side is a glass cabinet. And in this glass cabinet are various items, including the display of the Blackgate's twin. On the top of this display, there's a finished Blackgate's twin engine, complete with a fully piped reversing valve on the top of it. This reversing valve has seized up because this is a very old display. I'm going to make a video about repairing it, but in the meantime, to show the engine running, I piped up first one side and then the other individually. This makes it not self-starting, it's a fully double acting steam engine, but it runs much better than this when both cylinders are piped. I will show it running on both cylinders at the end of this video, once I've repaired the reversing valve. Here's a comparison shot, on the right hand side is the casting set, on the left hand side is the fully machined kit, and in my hand currently I have the cylinder casting. This needs cutting in half, and then you can make two cylinders, one for each side of the engine. This is an oscillating cylinder engine, and this is the important part. If you're going to make one of these engines from scratch, you will need a lathe, and other tools, but the good news is, Blackgate's engineering do these. These are pre-machined kits, and all you basically do is clean up the parts and bolt them together. What could be simpler? Both the machine kit and the casting set come with engineering drawings. And this kit's been around for a long time. If you look at the address on the bottom, that is not Blackgate's current address. That's from ages ago. Here's a general arrangement drawing. This engine features cylinders that have a bore of 9 16 of an inch and a stroke of 5 8 of an inch. Here's the parts list that you get with the machine kit. Now it's time to look at the kit contents. Starting with a piece of gasket material, you're going to need this for the cylinder covers. And here is a spring. This is an oscillating cylinder engine, so you need something to hold the cylinders against the port that they slide on. There's only one of these springs because it needs cutting in half to hold the cylinders in position on the port faces. Time to look inside the plastic packets and the first one that I pick up contains a pair of gland nuts. These are very well machined gland nuts, so that's a good start, and these are used to put pressure on the graphited yarn, and this makes it so that the piston rods, as they move in and out of the cylinders, are fully steam tight. And talking about cylinders, here they are, a very nicely machined pair of steam cylinders, complete with pre-machined pistons fitted inside them. There's a bit of handwork to do on these kits, what I'm doing at the moment is just cleaning off the burrs around the four holes in the end of each of the cylinders. These four tapped holes are where the bolts fit that hold the cylinder covers in place. The next thing to look at is the crankshaft, and it's very nice indeed, complete with a crank web. These are very old kits, so if you notice there's a slight bit of rusting on the crankshaft itself, but that's very easy to clean off using a piece of Scotch-Brite. Generally speaking, an oscillating cylinder engine is a very simple engine, but making this component is not simple in the slightest. The holes that you can see on the port faces on the standard need to line up perfectly with the holes on the port faces of the cylinders. And it doesn't end there. Once the holes have been drilled, and as you see, not all the way through, then there are cross drillings. These cross drilled holes allow the steam ports to communicate with the outside world be the exhaust and inlet ports. On the pre-machined kit, the holes have been drilled accurately and have been threaded, ready to take some brass studding to block them off. These kits are machined to a very high standard. The fit of the crankshaft into the main standard is perfection. Not slack and not tight, just perfect. Opening another plastic bag, and you can see here we have the cylinder covers top and bottom. Here's the flywheel, and this is ready to fit to the crankshaft. In another of the plastic bags are the connecting rods, complete with the big ends. So what's this? A piece of brass studding. Well, this is to block up the holes in the top of the standard and in the side of the standard. And last but not least, some graphited yarn, and by the look of this, it's quite old graphited yarn, when it used to be good. This is for packing the piston and the glands, but I think on the piston I would use an o-ring these days. When I went up to Blackgate's engineering, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I bought two of these machine kits. 
Why did I buy two? Well, they're the last two that are available. I'm going to build up one of these kits into a complete working engine. Please note the reversing valve is not included with the kit. It's a simple plane turning operation. So in this series, I will also make a reversing valve. So what am I going to do with the other kit? Well, I bought it because it is the last of the kits. I thought about raffling the engine for charity. One other thought that I had was to make a V4 version of this engine, which would be quite easy to do, especially as I have a second kit. Then I could sell the V4 via my Mainsteam Models website, and that way all of the proceeds go to the charity. Even though this is the last kit available from Blackgates, Phil did say he had a few parts left over in a box at home. And what I'm saying is there could be some random pre-machined parts available. Not a full kit, but maybe the important parts. These Blackgates twin engines are surprisingly powerful. They have more than enough power to propel a six foot long model steam launch through the water. As you can see, I've fixed the reversing valve, so I'm just going to leave you with this video of the engine running. In these clips, I've slowed down the video so you can see in detail how well this small engine runs. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.